Hey, what's going on guys? Vespa here, and it's time for another guide. Today, we're gonna discuss throw loops. So what are they, how to do them yourself, and how to deal with them. If you can, that is, they're pretty darn strong. But knowledge is key. Once you understand exactly how they work, it's gonna help you deal with them a lot better. You know, it's funny, in Street Fighter V, there used to be tons of throw loops, but Capcom removed pretty much all of them by the end of Street Fighter V's life. But now they're back with the vengeance in Street Fighter VI. And they're even stronger in Street Fighter VI uh, because of the punish counter system when you whip throws and because of drive rush because it allows even more characters to have them. All right, let's get started. So what is a throw loop? Well, quite simply, all it is is just after you throw your opponent, which is most of the time in the corner, uh, you have enough frame advantage to throw them again before they're even able to do their fastest attack. So really easy example here, I'll have Ken to wake up with a crouching light punch, which is his fastest attack. So here he pokes me after I throw him. So I'm going to throw him, and then I'm going to throw him again, see? And then no matter what, no matter how hard Ken mashes on it, he will not be able to get this attack out and I'll throw him. Unless, of course, I mistime my, my grab. But don't worry, with some simple frame data knowledge, I know that Ryu is plus 17 after his forward throw. So that means I can whiff a light punch and then press throw, and I'll perfectly time that throw every single time and I'll never screw up. So check this out. Easy peasy. So throw loops are so good because they're really easy to do, and they force your opponent to this very risky guessing situation uh, that can cost them a lot of life if they guess wrong, and they're essentially stuck in this loop, that's why it's called a throw loop, if they continue to guess wrong over and over again. Okay, so now you know what a throw loop is, it's time to show you guys a whole bunch of examples with a bunch of different characters. You know, pretty much every single character in Street Fighter VI has a throw loop, off the top of my head, I think the only exception is Chun-Li and Honda. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. And there's three core types of throw loops. There's certain characters need to dash to get the throw loop. Other characters can walk. And some characters have to use drive rush to throw loop. And that's usually characters that are like really slow movement speed or they don't have enough frame advantage after their throw. So obviously walk throw loops are the best uh, because that gives you the most amount of options after you throw your opponent and then followed by dash throw loops. And then finally, dry rush throw loops would be the weakest because, you know, costs resources to constantly do them. Now, if you're not good with frame data, don't worry. Uh, all you gotta do is just set the dummy to wake up, crouch and light punch with Ken. Just follow along with me and just experiment with, can your character dash throw after a throw? Can they walk up throw after a throw? And uh, can they drive rush throw after a throw? And that's one way you can narrow it down if you don't want to go through the numbers. Oh, and before I forget, in Street Fighter VI, strikes happen to be throws on the same frame. So make sure you put that into account. Okay, let's start hammering out some examples. Let's start with the dash throw loops. We're going to use Jerry for this. So after I throw Ken, we're plus 25 and my dash is 22 frames. So that means after I dash, I'm going to be plus 3, which is going to be Ken's crouch and light punch, which is 4 frames. Because throws start up in 5 frames in Street Fighter VI. So let's set Ken to do a wake up crouching light punch again after I throw him. So I throw him, see he does his wake up light. So we're gonna throw, dash, throw. And you can see the counter hit on the screen so you know he's pressing the button. And there you go, successful throw loop. And this is the dash version with Jury. So like I mentioned before, most throw loops are in the corner. Cause if I, if I throw Ken mid screen, look how far he is. Uh, you can back rise from throws in Street Fighter VI unless it's a punish counter. So obviously I'm way too far after my dash to even get close to Ken. So like I said, most throw loops are done in the corner because your opponent has like nowhere to go. All right, let's show another dash throw loop example. This time let's use Rashid. So Rashid, when he does his forward throw, he's really plus, he's plus 27. So after I dash, I'm gonna be plus nine. So that's a little too plus. So if I throw right away, I'm gonna throw just air. And then the opponent's gonna wake up with a button and blow me up. So that's not good. So I actually have to wait a small moment for my opponent to get up and then throw them. So let's set Kimberly to do a wake up crouching light punch. Wait, once again, her wake up crouching light punch is also four frames, just the same speed as Ken's. So I'll show an example. So let's throw, dash, wait, throw. Dash, wait, throw. Dash, wait, throw. See, she'll wake up crouching light punch. So that's another example right there. 
When I showed you guys that example with Ryu, I was so plus that I had enough time to whiff a light punch to time it correctly, but Rashidi can't do that. You simply just gotta eyeball it. Alright, let me show you guys a walking throw loop example with Ken. Ken actually's got one of the best throw loops in the game, man. Uh, so he's plus 20, dude. That's He has so much time. So I, I can either just walk forward and eyeball it and just throw Kim really again. So let me just turn on a crouching light punch. So let me show you guys an example of that. So Kimberly is going to do a wake up light, just showing you guys. So now I'm just going to walk forward, slight delay and throw because I'm so plus. Do it again. I'm just eyeballing it. There we go. And since Ken is so plus like Ryu, if you're not comfortable with the timing because you have to eyeball it, then you could do something like whiff a standing light punch with Ken uh, right after the throw and then throw and that will just really help with the timing. So let me show you a quick example of that too. I'll whiff the standing light punch first this time. You see this makes the timing a lot easier. This is really dangerous for the opponent too because they don't know if I'm going to go into a second light attack. Like I could do something like this. You know, I don't have to throw them. And then they're right back in the same situation. Let's show another walk-in example. Actually, uh, Jamie can do a dash and a walk. So let's set Kimberly to do a wake up crouch and light punch again. So I throw. She's gonna do her crouch and light punch. And this time I'm gonna throw, walk forward, throw. I'll just show he can dash, just so you guys know. Actually, I should bring this up too. If you're having problems with the dash timing, you can buffer the dash. So you can just mash on forward forward if you want, or you can press it earlier than you think you would, and the game will buffer that for you. And then you can just mash on throw or buffer throw. Okay, and now the drive rush throw loop. So Marisa, she's too slow uh, to forward throw you, and then you know forward throw you again. She has to use meter. So let's get Chun Li to do a wake up uh, crouch and light punch this time. Uh, which should be four frames, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let me show an example. I'll forward throw with Marisa. I'll try to walk forward throw. <laughs> Not even close. So let's use that drive meter now. So now we got her, see? Got her. And you can see Chun Li does a wake up crouch and light punch. So. It's still really strong, you know, you're using one bar each time. But with the drive system, Marisa wouldn't otherwise have a throw loop. Really powerful for a character like Marisa to have one. Another example of Guile, he's supposed to be a zoner. He's not supposed to have throw loops. So I'll try to walk up throw, can't do it. I'll try to normally dash, can't do it, not even close. Now we'll use the drive meter. And I'll drive rush in. Boom, now he has it. Once again, really powerful for a character like Guile to have this crazy throw loop rush down. All right, so now I showed you guys a bunch of examples of the three types of throw loops. Now I'm going to go much more in depth on why throw loops are so damn powerful. Because you guys are probably thinking right now, man, why don't you just tech the throw, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys first, what do throw loops beat depending on what your opponent does? So first, the obvious, if your opponent blocks, he's going to get thrown. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys have figured this out. So we'll have Chun Li block. I throw, you know, I walk forward, throw again. No problem. We also know that throw loops beat strikes because I showed you guys a million times by now. So I'll get Chun Li to do a wake up crushing light punch. And you can see I just walk up throw with Kami. It also beats drive impact, it beats parry, it beats drive reversal. So Chun Li does wake up drive impact. Uh, we obviously know that loses the throws. So throw her, drive impact, go beat it. She tries to wake up and parry. Uh, throws happen to be parries, so drive parry. So I'll show that. Just for clarity, see? And I get a punish counter, I get even more damage that way. And then obviously Chun Li can't do drive reversal because she has to block first. But then you're probably thinking, what about jumps? So the opponent starts to fidget and they jump back in the corner, they jump straight up. It doesn't matter because you'll recover from your throw whiff and still have enough time to anti air them. So I'll get Chun Li to just jump up, jumping heavy kick, for example. So I'll just imagine I'm doing the throw loop here. And I'll go for the throw, and then I have enough time to see her jump in the air and then uppercut her. If she tries to jump forward, tries to jump out of the corner like this you'll usually get hit by a cross cut uppercut 
And in fact, a lot of pro players, they go for it. They do jump out of the corner and they just take that damage because at least they're out of the corner. But for a lot of characters and more players are figuring out ways to stop this too. So it's not exactly a foolproof plan. So in this example, let's say I like I move forward. I'm going for a shimmy and I see her jump out like that. I could just do an air throw at Kami and they're right back in the corner. Or you could do something crazier if you were going for the throw again. You can go something like this. And you see them jump out and then you can put them back into the corner. And like every character has something like this that can keep you stuck. I'll show another example here with Jamie. So we'll throw JP here. And something typical will happen like they'll jump back heavy kick to try to get out of it. And then Jamie has more than enough time to DP again with this. I don't even think he needs, he needs to do the OD version. He could just do a normal version. Yeah, more than enough time. And as you get better with throw loops, you'll have like all these plan B's ahead of time so that when you do go for the throw again, you'll be ready depending on what your opponent does. So let me show an example of JP tries to jump out instead. And I throw a Jamie. You can do something like this. You can get really creative and, and punish them really hard for jumping out. Ken's another easy example if they try to jump out. I can just run mix up left and right on them or switch sides, doesn't matter. Or you can keep it really simple and just do an uppercut into super. Like that. That'll still do great damage. Alright, let's quickly summarize everything so far because I showed you guys a lot. So we know throw loops beat blocks, they also beat strikes, they beat drive impact, they beat drive parry, they beat drive reversal, and they beat jumps as long as you know what to do with your character. They deal a lot of damage the opponent tries to jump out. So now, let's get to the part where, what if the opponent just simply just techs the throw of Vesper? So as a defender, going for the tech throw can be rewarding in Street Fighter 6. So I'll walk forward, get the tech throw, it builds some space. However, you're still in the corner. You know, there's a lot of space between us, but you're still in a bad situation. But it can be rewarding. It allows Chun-Li to, you know, drive rush towards me. Enough space to whip punish me, right? To get out. It is helpful, but the risk is very high because now, what if I didn't go for another throw in my throw loop? I have more options than that. What if I go for a shimmy instead? So if I shimmy this time, chun is going to think I'm going to walk forward and throw her again, but this time I walk back and she's going to whip the throw. And because of punish counters, she's going to take massive damage. Something like this, right? And that could be over. That could be the end of the match. And that's going for one tech throw attempt. That's why I said at the start of this video that throw loops put you in a very risky guessing game. So let's say Chun-Li did a wake up reversal this time because we know an invincible reversal will beat a throw and a wake up super will also be a throw. So we'll get the OD version. So if I was going for the shimmy and I didn't know Chun-Li was going to go for the reversal, I would end up blocking because I'm walking backwards to avoid the throw. So the shimmy will beat reversals, wake up supers, and it will beat throws. And once again, since I blocked it, I get the punish counter anyways. And then the exact same combo. And I already showed you guys what happens if you try to jump out during the shimmy. I can just air throw a Kami, for example, uh, and put him back into the corner. I guess I could show another example with another character. So quick example of Marisa, I go for a shimmy and I see them jump out. Boom, level three. Mad damage, and this will level through, put them in the corner again. And even if I don't have the meter to do a super, there's a lot of things you can do. I can go for a shimmy and I can do jumping medium punch, like that, and they're back in the corner. Keep in mind if you have a character that has a dash throw loop, like Jury, for example, you won't have enough time to walk back out of the throw. You'll just end up getting thrown yourself, which will suck. But don't worry, there's a solution to this. All you gotta do is just back dash after the forward throw. And then uh, you can stop them when they're in recovery. Something like this, for example. You see it did punish counter. So that'll stop them from uh, pressing throw. And it's still a shimmy. So even going for a shimmy during throw loops covers a lot of options. They beat the opponent from throw teching. They beat the opponent from doing a wake up reversal. Doesn't matter if it's invincible or if it's a super. And can still beat the opponent from jumping out. So of course to complete the paper rock scissors, I've showed you guys what happens when I go for a throw. When I go for a shimmy. What happens when I go for a media attack this time? So if the opponent wakes up and attempts to strike, even though they know that's going to lose to a throw, 
Uh, they can get hit by a meaty, and it's your funeral for this too. Like you're gonna, whew, you're gonna take insane deeps. So if I attack them during my throw loop, it beats their wake up attack, and it also benefits from beating their jump as well, because if they're holding up forward or up or whatever, they're not blocking, and then I'm gonna strike them before they leave the ground. So it also covers that option, and I hit them <laughs> once again, pretty much with the same combo or whatever I want to do. So let me show another example with Kami. So let's get Chun-Li to wake up with a strike again. And instead of me going for another throw, I'm going to strike her with a meaty. Of course, I win because I'm at advantage. And if Chun-Li tries to jump out, she can't block because she's jumping, right? So I'll show her jumping. This time I'm going to strike. Same combo, same situation. Okay, so let me summarize this again. So when I'm throw looping the opponent, if I go for a throw again during the throw loop, we know it beats blocks, strikes, drive impact, parry, drive reversal, and it can beat jumps if you know what to do. If I went for the shimmy instead during the throw loop, we know the shimmy will beat them from trying to do a throw tech. We know it'll beat the reversal because when I walk back, I'm blocking. So they do wake up super or wake up invincible reversal or whatever. And once again, it could be jumps if you know what you're doing with your character. Finally, if I do a throw loop and I go for a meaty, so I go for a strike, um, it's going to beat them from trying to jump out and it's going to beat them from trying to press a button. So the throw loop is definitely in my favor. I have a lot more options that cover a lot of their defensive options. And that's why they're so damn powerful. All right, don't worry. I'm not going to leave you guys hanging here. You guys are probably wondering, okay, Vesper, how do we counter this? <laughs> so now we're going to talk about what can you do against throw loops. And I'm going to start right off by saying number one is you simply have to guess right. <laughs> I know that's what you guys don't want to hear, but seriously, guessing right is the best thing you can do. So what I mean is if you think the opponent is going to throw you again in the throw loop, then you want to do like a reversal, for example. So if I go for a throw again and Chun-Li does a reversal, I'm going to get hit. And now you're out. You're good, right? You guessed right out of my three options, three core options. You can simply tech the throw because if you tech the throw, it's going to build space between you. Just be ready to get out once you tech that throw, either by drive rushing in, right? Or walking forward and building that space. Don't just sit there in the corner because then you're not out yet. One trick you can do is you can attempt to backdash. So if you backdash, uh, it's invincible to throws. And then you might be able to punish the throw recovery. And it's not so bad if they try to shimmy because then you'll build a lot of space from each other. But keep in mind, this is going to lose to strikes if I do a strike. So for example, let's say Ryu puts me in a throw loop. I'm playing Kami and he throw loops me and then I do a wake up backdash. Then I can like back throw him and now he's in the corner, for example. So that's like one little trick you can do. If you happen to play a grappler like Zingy for Manon or Lily, this trick can be really useful because you can go into a command grab instead and do even more damage, which is really nice. You could go for the wake up jump. I would recommend jumping out of the corner, not straight up. You can get a lot of damage if you land on top of their head, but most of the time I would just get out of the corner. And uh, yeah, you're probably going to eat an uppercut for doing it, but at least you're out. And that's what a lot of pro players tend to do. But it's not going to work every time because once again, if the opponent goes for a strike, it's going to hit you before you leave the ground. If you're feeling really spicy, you can go for the wake up low attack too. Because if you think they're going to shimmy, they're obviously going to be walking backwards. So they'll be standing and they're not blocking low. Some pro players risk this too. So... I'll show an example of that. You can do something like this. So you walk back and you get tagged, right? That can go into a dry rush. It can go into a super. And that's one way to deal with if you know the opponent's going to shimmy. I'm sure you've heard the expression, just take the throw because throws don't do a lot of damage. So you have a lot of time to kind of see what your opponent is doing. And if they eventually go for a shimmy attempt and you block while you wake up and you see them walk back, that's where you get the space and then you can drive rush, you know, jump out or you can strike them to stop them and the throw loop ends right there. So you can risk blocking on wake up. Another cool trick you can do, but it depends on what character you play. You could do some kind of instant air move. So for example, chun -Li can do instant air legs. So if I go for a throw again like this, she can hit me with the instant air legs and that's pretty cool. Jerry could do jump forward medium punch. That will be a throw as well. And she can cancel it into her dive kick, for example. 
And Lou can just, I don't know, jetpack out of there with his stupid knuckle. Like that. And you can get out of the corner. You basically use your imagination. So think of what can you do after you jump forward with your character. So let's summarize what you can do against throw loops. Once again, it's going to be a guess at the end of the day. It's going to be risky. That's why throw loops are so strong. Uh, but if you think they're going to throw you again, you can simply tech the throw if you're willing to risk that. You can backdash. Uh, you can try jumping out. You can do reversal or some type of instant air attack. If you think they're going to strike you on wake up, you can still do a reversal. You can block, but you can't jump. And if you think they're going to shimmy, you can try jumping. You can try waking up with a low attack. Uh, you can block and then try to build space between you and your opponent because they're walking out. You have to think about all the options they can do and what you can do and make your read accordingly. Uh, I know it doesn't sound fair, but when you know what your opponent's options are and your options are, you're going to make better informed decisions when you are getting throw looped and you're not just like wailing on buttons and mashing buttons or mashing on reversal and just getting destroyed. And boom, that's it. I hope you guys have learned something. Let's wrap up this video. If you guys have any additional advice to give on throw loops, be sure to leave a comment below. Or if you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer them. Or even better yet, come check out my stream. I stream live every single day. And I'll be able to answer you there in the chat. So I'll be back, guys, with some more guides. And we'll even cover more on throw loops in the future. And uh, yeah, until next time, everyone. Take care. Peace.